Okay, welcome back. Uh, just before we went for our break, we we're looking at uh, Howard Gardner's uh, different learning styles or intelligences. So we looked at, can anyone name the intelligences that we looked at? Anyone? What's the first one we looked at? Okay. Uh, the first Musical. one we looked at? Linguistic. Okay, not uh, sorry, not in, in in this class. The first one that we studied, first one, uh, linguistic. Thank you, Jeffina. Second one. Today, I think it was musical. Yes, today it was musical, but I'm saying let's go in order. The first one that we looked at last from last week uh, was linguistic. The second one was logical and mathematical. The third one, like Lubega said, was musical. And after musical, what did we look at? Anyone else? Anyone? What is the fourth one we looked at? Spatial. Spatial. Thank you, Divya. Fifth one? Kinesthetic and something. <laughs> something. Bodily kinesthetic. OK. Uh, that's the fifth one. Sixth one? What did we just Interpersonal. Interpersonal intelligence, yes. And the seventh one that we look at now is intrapersonal, okay, which uh, Lubega just shared when uh, we were doing interpersonal, he thought it was intrapersonal, okay. So we look at intrapersonal intelligence. What comes to your mind when you think of intrapersonal intelligence? So interpersonal is basically those who are good at understanding uh, others' emotions, you know, um, good at uh, effectively relating with others. What do you think are intrapersonal intelligence? Intra. Good at knowing themselves, like contemplating and reflecting. OK. Uh, good at contemplating, good at reflecting, yes. And like Lubega said, you know, they get into their own emotions, they're able to perceive things, understand things. Um, Jeffina says they're in their own world, <laughs> uh, which is very true. Uh, have you seen children who are lost and in their, in their own world, you know, in the class? And we basically think they are not um, uh, listening. Uh, or they are not uh, relating to you, they are not understanding. It's basically their intrapersonal intelligence, um, the intelligence that relates to, uh, you know, self-awareness and understanding their own emotions, motivations, and uh, strengths. Uh, this, um, can you change the slide to intra, please, Sajafina? Thank you. Yeah. Um, you can see some children, you know, when, when they're seated in the class, you'll have all of them seated, seated in the front or together. You'll have one or two going and sitting way back in, in, in the last row or there'll be, you know, they leave two benches and they will be sitting there. These are basically this intrapersonal intelligence. Uh, there are also people who are not interested in group activities. You put them in group activities, they will slowly get up from their benches. They'll walk very lethargically and they'll just stand there and just, you know, gaze at people or they gaze into the sky. They'll be thinking something and you'll think they're basically not interested. They're lazy, they are, but they're basically in their own world. They are listening to information, but they are kind of, uh, understanding it in their own sense, their own emotions, in their own perspective, seeing things with their own colored lenses, so to say. But they are actually receiving. They're just listening to everybody, but they are also deep in thought, lost in um, thought. Okay. Um, uh, also, we have, you know, some kind of some children in children's church, their parents, uh, you know, uh, I know they, they're kind of very, very sad because all the children will be sitting and listening, but their child will be running around the class. 
will not be sitting in one place. Will be fidgeting, running around from here to there, to moving their legs, or to playing with something. And um, I remember one of them who was teaching in children's church. She was saying how uh, once you know um, they got back home and uh, they were just talking about something, and the child immediately said, "Yeah, that is what." the teacher taught us today in class and the parent was shocked because the parent thought you know uh, their little one was running around doing all gymnastics playing not just listening to i mean thought he was not listening to the teacher but he was saying exactly what the teacher was saying had told in the class and she was pretty shocked so we can have people like this people are totally isolated lost in their own world you think they are uh, not listening to you but they are receiving information and trying to make it more uh, introspective they're, in, they're more introspective reflective uh, you know, and there are people who value their own thoughts and feelings. They're kind of interna internalizing everything, you know, uh, and, um, you know, they are there because they basically understand their own emotions, motivations and strengths very well. So this kind of learners, they enjoy activities that involve self-reflection, you know, uh, goal setting, personal growth. So if you uh, have a student workbook and you look at how, uh, you know, look at the section where you uh, we have the section, how you've applied what you have learned. So children go back home through the week. They, uh, uh, you know, apply the lesson that they've learned and they come, they write on Saturday how they have applied what they have learned. And you will see most of them, some of them who are not, uh, you know, uh, 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 people who journal, write, um, and all that, you know, uh, would, would have not written anything in that section. But we'll have people like the intrapersonal intelligence who are more reflective, uh, the linguistic who are good with words, they would have written, you know, um, we'll not have people with, uh, you know, maybe musical uh, uh, linguists will not write, um, uh, but, you know, ask them to sing what they have uh, practiced, they will do that. So, you know, this uh, uh, intrapersonal, you know, uh, intelligence, they will, uh, they're more reflective, they introspect, so they will be able to write and share and journal their thoughts and their um, feelings, okay? So you can, what are the kind of uh, activities we can suggest for these kind of learners? Any thoughts? What are some of the activities that we can think of incorporate in our? Yeah, I'll just share uh, what happened in my class once. So there is always someone who is late because like uh, they'll be, now they're very wise. They don't sit in the last row. They sit in the first row at last. <laughs> so uh, there's always someone like that in my class. And I remember once uh, they're teaching about love or something I, I don't remember but we had a time of making greeting cards for their mom and dad and i was quite surprised the people were very silent they were, they were so creative because now they don't have to interact with anyone and it's their own world and they wrote paragraphs in it they wrote so many lines then then the people who were active we know that we usually accept the one who are active they will do more but when, when I remember when I gave this greeting card, they wrote paragraphs, they, they did so many creative things in the cards. So I think that's one of the things uh, we can suggest them to do. Yes. Thank you. Jeffina, anyone else? Okay, so some of the suggested activities is journaling you know self-reflection exercises or activities goal setting tasks you can give them uh, you know uh, get them to think about some personal projects that they will take on to explore their own thoughts and emotions uh, just give I'll allocate some time for personal re reflection uh, you know for quiet uh, introspection uh, where they can, you know, and, and encourage them to think about their feelings, their experiences, their personal growths, you know. Uh, you can also get them to write a short story of uh, what they went through, you know, share it uh, or what they're going through or how they're going to implement what they're going to, uh, uh, how they're going to practice what they have learned. Um, you can also get them to explore a topic of their own choice, you know, and come and 
speak it up. They might not want to come and speak it up, but maybe you can. They can write it down. You can, and you can have a linguist read it out for you, or somebody who's an interpersonal intelligence to read it out for them, help them. So basically, you know, these kind of learners, they love journaling. You know, uh, writing down their thoughts, feelings, insights. Um, you know, personal reflection time, uh, you know, dedicate the time uh, for each class where there's personal reflection, uh, you know, even a time of uh, meditating on what they have uh, listened, understood, asking God to help them, prayer, you know, uh, where uh, to that quiet time of uh, introspection, they're able to connect their inner, inner thoughts, emotions, feelings with uh, God. Also, these kind of learners, you know, you can provide them opportunities for independent study where they uh, explore topics uh, of interest related to the lesson that you're teaching them or the topics, you know, and um, offer them some resources such as books or articles or online videos uh, where they, you know, it will be a self-directed learning. They'll do very well because they're self-motivated. You know, they'll just enjoy that. Um, also give them some, uh, uh, you know, space to express themselves creatively uh, through art, music, writing. These, uh, basically, uh, these intrapersonal, you put interpersonal there, intrapersonal. These intrapersonal intelligence can also be a linguistic, uh, linguistic uh, intelligence. They can be. They can also be musically uh, uh, musical intelligence. They can also be logical and mathematical intelligence because they can have a combination of one or more of them where that is their strengths. So a creative expression will work very well for these kind of people. A goal setting also get them to you know set goals, whether it's spiritual growth, you know character development, academic uh, achievements, uh, even memorizing scripture passages. You know you can give them um, goal setting for them to do. Also uh, spiritual growth, growing uh, spiritually in their work with um, God. Okay. You can also assign them personal projects, you know, where they can explore topics or themes that are meaningful to them and allow them to choose their own topics and, uh, you know, create presentations. They can even lead discussions uh, based on their interests and uh, passions. OK, you'll be amazed that some of them who are intrapersonal, even though they don't interact well with others, but when you bring them up in front because they have the skill of being uh, with linguistic intelligence, they're good at words, they can, you know, share their thoughts and their ideas uh, well with um, others. OK. Also, their personal growth, their goal setting can motivate others as well. And also, you know, encourage these students to engage in self-assessment um, activities where they're evaluating their own learning progress, their strengths, and their area of um, growth. OK, so this can all of these can help uh, this kind of learners. Now, if you notice, I've uh, just mentioned seven of them, uh, it's seven intelligences. The last one is a naturalistic intelligence, which learns through nature. OK, so I'm not going to, uh, you know, delve into that to talk more on that. But they basically um, a naturalistic um, intelligence. They learn through nature very well. So you have these people going on hikes and, you know, outdoors. Uh, they're very excited. They learn well. They can sit outside and just study and learn uh, in a park, uh, wherever. So uh, those are naturalistic uh, intelligence. OK, so we've looked at the seven uh, intelligences. Would you just take a minute to think what are the combinations of intelligence that you have as a person, whether you are linguistic, or you are uh, logical and mathematical, you are uh, musical, you are spatial, bodily, kinesthetic, interpersonal, intrapersonal intelligence. You can have all of them, but what is your dominant learning style? Just take a minute to think. Maybe you want to write it down or. What is your specific combination and a strength? 
these intelligence it can vary from person to person but maybe what is your dominant one and then you can have one or two that adds on to your dominant strength yes lubega i think we might be born with one or if not two but uh, there are others which uh, i think can literally be developed for instance me i know from the core that i'm logical and mathematical but i think as a leader or as a pastor i need also these two the last two intrapersonal and personal and interpersonal intelligence thank you ma'am no. So Lubega, you said you are logical and mathematical intelligence. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, according to Howard Gardner, he says, you know, um, uh, uh, everyone possesses all eight intelligences to some extent. Uh, but, you know, uh, there'll be a specific combination of strength of these intelligence, but just vary from very person to person. OK, so. Uh, basically we'll have some dominant intelligences so for you your dominant intelligences can be logical and mathematical intelligence uh what else is your combination what else adds to that strength i think you're a good linguistic intelligence also i think you learn well with words because you speak right you're very true mom uh the, the reason why I was saying like that, because I read, I literally know that everything is embedded in all of us. Sorry, we lost you, Lubega. We can't. Well, there are things that I can do with my right hand. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Uh, anyone else wants to share? What is your uh, dominant intelligence and what also other intelligence, you know, combination of them? Anyone wants to share? Yes, Divya. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. I think uh, I'm more of a uh, linguistic uh intrapersonal dominant yeah those are dominant mostly yeah and have yeah others in like varying <laughs> degrees the degrees. others okay but your strengths and the combination is linguistic and intrapersonal okay right anyone else likes to share uh, I'll share. yes yeah, so I think mine is more like a spatial intelligence. I love to see the object lessons, the graphs, even when uh, when I was in school and I was learning, I make sure uh, how I'm remembering all those things and all this. So even when I go out and teach, I make sure I have something in my hands to teach. I think that that dominates a lot. And I love to be creative with, with what I do always. And uh, thankfully, God sent me linguistic intelligence as well. Because I love the language, the English, or uh, the way I narrate, I, I make sure I add my emotions to it. And also God has blessed me with musical intelligence, which I, I think I have to work on it a lot. I've been, I've been blessed, but uh, yeah, but I do love uh, to worship, to sing songs, but uh, haven't tried much creative in it, but I think I can still do it. Thank you, Jeffina. Anyone else likes to share? Giselotoli says interpersonal and naturalistic is my uh, dominant uh, okay intelligences okay anyone else like to share okay uh, if there's no one else who's like to share well, I'll just have an activity which I all of us i want i want all of us to uh, you know uh, share your thoughts and ideas 
<laughs> what's mine <laughs> okay mine is um, uh, yes more uh, linguistic um, intelligence and i'm also a bodily kinesthetic uh, intelligence yeah and uh, i was interpersonal but now i think i'm getting more intrapersonal it's changing a little bit but yeah linguistic intelligence Thank you. Okay. Um, so um, we're going to have an activity, and I want all of us to be involved in that. Okay. So I want to hear your thoughts and ideas. Um, uh, now, just imagine your teaching. Your teaching maybe uh, this Sunday you're rostered, or the coming Sunday, the next Sunday you're rostered to teach at. Uh, uh, at children's church or Sunday school, and you're going to teach them either uh, David and Goliath's story or Zacchaeus' story, OK? How are you going to incorporate all of these seven intelligences in your lesson plan, OK? So that is the activity that we are going to do now. So I want all of you to think, OK? Uh, we've uh, list, we put up the list on the, on the uh, presented on the slide so you can think oh, how am I going to uh, narrate the story or um, how I'm going to use this lesson uh, to help uh, linguistic learners logical mathematical learners musical spatial bodily kinesthetic interpersonal intrapersonal what am I going to do okay what is the teaching methodology what are the things I'm going to incorporate Okay, so I'll just give you a minute or two to think, and then we'll start uh, sharing our ideas for each intelligence. Uh, you can think on both stories, or you can think of any one. Or do you want to, as a class, do you want to choose something? Do you want to you choose David and Goliath or Zacchaeus? What do you all think? Can we have some votes, please? Whether you want David and Goliath or Zacchaeus, you can put it on the chat section. Which story would you want to consider? OK, Zacchaeus, anyone else? Hmm? OK, uh, we have one Zacchaeus and one David and Goliath. Jeffina says David and Goliath. What do the others want? Everyone else else in class, please? Can you all post in the chat section? OK, David and Goliath. So two David and Goliath against one Zacchaeus. <laughs> oh, no, my gosh, we have two Zacchaeus, two David and Goliath. OK, others vote quickly, please, so that we can have uh, whichever has the major votes, we'll go for that. OK, so we have three against two. OK, four against two. OK, so we'll, uh, OK, so we have three against four. <laughs> OK, so we maybe we can do what we do is those of you who said Zacchaeus, that's fine. Those, those of you who said David and Goliath is also fine. So those who said David and Goliath can share your thoughts on linguistic intelligence and how you know, uh, we can cater to their needs. And those of you who said Zacchaeus, you can mention for Zacchaeus. OK, so we can have all of you. We don't want to uh, put one particular story, but we can have two stories. So it'll be more exciting than just one. OK, so now you can think. Those of you who would like Zacchaeus, you choose Zacchaeus. You can share your thoughts for all of these intelligences. For those of you who said David and Goliath, you can go with David and Goliath. So we'll just take a minute or two to think, and then we'll share our ideas.
maybe you can just put out that linguistic intelligence so people can know what it is and then uh, yeah so we can just do it Putting out each slide slowly, so you can just look at all the points, uh, uh, just recollect all that we went through, so you can think of some activity. Okay, so we'll begin. Uh, the first one is linguistic uh, intelligence. So what is, uh, <clears throat> what can the teacher do? Those of you who said, suggested David and Goliath can share for David and Goliath. Those who said for Zacchaeus can suggest for Zacchaeus. Okay. I'm ready to hear your uh, thoughts and ideas. Can I share, uh, ma'am, on linguistic? Yes, please, Divya. Yeah, one thing I can think of is uh, uh, as we read the passage uh, for Zacchaeus, uh, you know, ask the, those kids to highlight words that are, um, that, they don't understand or they that stuck out to them for example like uh maybe dwarf or a big commotion or a tall so and they uh, if they could express uh what it is in as per their understanding uh yeah that's what one one thing i can think of okay thank you anyone else Praise Lord, Pastor. Yes, Lyndon. So, so it's it's like uh, explaining the story first and asking them to uh, emulate how they would have reacted in such a scenarios, uh, bringing them to discussions, thinking from uh, you know the object's point of view, and making them react to situations. We can also engage the children to think virtually what. Uh, you know, uh, the, either Zacchaeus or, or David's thought process might have been or how they would react to that situation and then bringing them to the objective of the message again. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Lyndon. Anyone else? Uh, as I was thinking about... For higher classes, I think we can also think about uh, having a debate on uh, why Jesus... Uh, uh, is Jesus interested in uh, tax collectors, sinners, and uh, if you were in that place, um, how would you uh, approach Jesus? So mostly like a debate and just see, uh, you know, is it is it okay for a child, uh, is it okay for a person to go to Jesus uh, or not? And 
Yes, good. Thank you, uh, all of you, for sharing those lovely thoughts. Uh, yes, Jeffina? Uh, I was just thinking about David and Goliath, and uh, even us adding a lot of emotions, like how Goliath was, how David was. And I was even thinking of the brothers, they didn't uh, actually support David, and what King Saul said about David, and all this, I think uh, we can add the emotions like how a king speaks how uh, a goliath speaks and uh, above all how david comes with the power of god and i think the emotions in our words can really make it interesting okay so narrating the story with uh, being very expressive and all that okay voice modeling anything else okay so for um, good uh, thoughts very good thank you for linguistic intelligence you can have you know uh, the teacher either read out the story best is to narrate it using expressions you know uh, using effective storytelling techniques uh, also you can encourage um, you know um, as a recap you can encourage the children with this kind of intelligence to retell the story in their own words uh, or individually in small groups or you can get them to uh, share uh, you know uh, uh, the group discussion you can have a group discussion you can have a debate uh, you know um, on the emotions or um, uh, who was right who was wrong what they did was right what they did was wrong um, you know just uh, also ask a lot of questions that will spark uh, them to think uh, uh, and also spark up uh, discussions and um, just encourage children to share their thoughts and their interpretations of the uh, story. So if you're talking about concepts related to these stories, you know, the power of that is there in Jesus name or trusting in uh, putting your faith and trust in Jesus. Also wonderful themes that you can um, get these uh, linguistic learners to talk about, discuss, debate, uh, which will be very good. Yeah, we'll move on to the next one, uh, logical and mathematical uh, intelligence. OK, so what do you think are the suggested activities? logical and mathematical intelligence. Them to the parables of, Je no, on the miracles of Jesus Christ, especially feeding the 5,000 uh, plus men, women and children. Okay, thank you, Lubega. Anyone else? Yeah, for Zaki's story, especially, we can uh, like make the kids think about how to, uh, you know, how Zacchaeus will um, uh, accomplish uh, like his purpose of meeting, seeing Jesus in the midst of this big crowd. And also, like, we can uh, highlight like the important, uh, like, the Mm, uh, change that Zacchaeus had, the transformation that he had, and he says like he would give away, you know, four times. So maybe, maybe an activity with you know uh, marbles or something which can uh, help the kids understand how much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. You know, uh, four times giving back. Uh, uh, you know what it means how much it will in, involve how much of uh, you know stuff he'll have to give away and all of those things yes and what he would have done how big the tree was you know how you'd have climbed up the tree and all of those things yes thank you divya success yeah i uh, i think uh, i uh, sorry i just went out now just coming back i want to say uh this uh, on logical and mathematical intelligence right mm -hmm. I, i'll take my own cost, uh, case study of that woman that touched the ends of his garment. It, 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 she logically stayed there and waiting for God to touch his garment, waiting for Jesus to touch his garment. And the second also with uh, Zacchaeus, he climbed, he has already, you know, think ahead, logically that his problem will be solved. The, one of the women, the, her problem was got solved because she went and positioned herself. She didn't allow anybody to know a mission. Logically, she grabs and Jesus noticed who touched the ends of my garment. Now, everybody will amazed. This woman positioned herself. So I will see it as a 
mathematical intelligence because she programming she already uh, i don't know how to put it but that is my own contribution <laughs> yeah thank you success yeah anyone else I'm sorry, it's, it's like I went off topic, but let me talk about the story of Zacchaeus as far as math, uh, logic and mathematics is concerned. I can put them into height. What do you think was the height of Zacchaeus and other people? And what do you think was the height of the tree so that Zacchaeus was able to see these people? How, who are the most, which categories of people in the story? For instance, there is Jesus Christ, there is Zacchaeus and other people. What do you think are the numbers? How big do you think in centimeters or in meters, how big was Zacchaeus' house? And how much money do you think was enough in Zacchaeus' uh, uh, control to make sure that we can say that I can give this amount of money to the people that he had robbed in case any robbing was was there? I'm sorry, I was like offside when I was answering it for the, the first no time. No problem. Thank you, Lubega. Thank you, Success. I think that's very important, interesting points. Yes, I think all the logical, mathematical intelligence whose minds will just be spinning in Lubega's class, thinking of you know, all the dimensions and all of those things. Great. They'll be really superly excited. Yeah. Anyone else? Uh, I'll just say about the David and Goliath, like... Uh, you can ask a lot of thought-provoking questions. What are things you will get for the battles? Uh, do you think uh, David can go without sword and all this? And uh, how Goliath, what are the things he wore and all this? And uh, recently, one of the activities that I was thought of doing is uh, a lot of free puzzles available in the internet. We can just take a printout of the whole stories and we can just make them sit in a group and do the puzzles. And through the puzzles, we can show them. Uh, the sequence of the stories even i think that's one of the things we can do here yes that's good thank you jeffina anyone else so i think yeah most of you shared you know just to talk about strategic uh, elements of the story such as david using the five stones why did he choose smooth stones how smooth it was how big it was you know um, uh, zach is climbing the tree how uh, you know how what was his size how tall was the tree where do you think he was seated on the tree which branch you know uh, you can also ask children to analyze and compare the strengths and the weaknesses of the characters in the story you know what was david's strength what was saul's strength what was uh, goliath's strength what was uh, uh, the brother's strengths the 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 army uh, the israelite army their strengths what were their weaknesses so these kind of logical and mathematical intelligences will think quickly uh, and they'll uh, you know they'll give the answers because they're thinking about uh, comparing strengths and weaknesses also you know uh, just throw at them some uh, or pose some problem solving questions related to the story you know uh, what do you think uh, david had in uh, mind what was the strategy he would use to you know bring down goliath or what do you think uh, zacchaeus would have done you know to see jesus and um, you know, when Jesus uh, came and stopped in the tree, what do you think Zacchaeus would be thinking? What do you think he was planning to do? And all of those things, you know, uh, uh, or what is the creative way, you know, David could have used to Sorry, just uh, lost network connection there. I'm back. So uh, the next one is musical intelligence. How can we break this in our lesson plan? Musical intelligence. Uh, so for Saki story, I was just searching like for any. Uh, so there, it seems like there is a, a famous uh, song like Zacchaeus was a wee little man. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's kind of a good story to uh, express in a song, uh, which helps kids to, especially smaller kids will really enjoy. Yes, there is um, 
uh, Zacchaeus' story, even David and Goliath, I think there is a Hindi song uh, about David and Goliath, you know, Guma uh, Guma Ke Mara with all the actions and all that, you know. So, yeah, you can even also teach the memory verse in song. What else? Yeah, I think for David, we can also include a victory song. Like uh, when you finish the story, you can all just, if they, if they had any known songs, like in Tamil, we have so many songs that sings about victory and all this. We can add that. And also, if you are musically skilled, there are so many background music that you can add, like uh, the music of uh, what happens in a war, what kind of music, uh, like, because nowadays kids, they watch a lot of movies. They know what song signifies this word and the music of horror as he explained and the music of victory as he explained and that would really excite them. Yeah, so you can have a trumpet, you know, the uh, and Goliath, uh, you can you, you can even, uh, you know, uh, make those sounds uh, or you can get these musically, uh, uh, you know, uh, intelligent learners to make sounds of trumpet and, you know, Goliath speaking and the boom, boom, and, you know, everyone goes talking and scared and running away and all of those things. Yes. Uh, also for uh, Zacchaeus' story, you can... Uh, any thoughts? Yes, yes, Lubega. I wanted also to, to talk about the after after the the, the the David story. We know that the women started the, as they usually do, started singing that Saul has killed thousands and David has killed tens of thousands. So I can take them to that to show them that uh, this is what people in those days sang about the victory of David. Thank you. Yes, thank you. So you can have uh, some song. Uh, you can play some Jewish this one and show how the women dance. You can also have a bodily kinesthetic intelligence people doing a dance and a choreography, just basically uh, dancing. What else can you do? You can show them a video with David and Goliath for the smaller kids. You know, David and Goliath, Zacchaeus's story. You can. Um, also have uh, you know the narrative in song you can teach them they can learn yes oh we'll move on to the next one that was also good thank you all for sharing your thoughts spatial intelligence yeah i'll just go ahead first uh, i think the slingshot craft uh, we can make them do that uh, for David and Goliath and also some paper stones we can make them and uh, we can just help them to see, touch it and all this and even movies on David and Goliath. Okay. Just, yeah. yeah, good. Can get all the props. Yeah. What else? For spatial learners, intelligence, can hear others, please? Maybe for Zacchaeus, uh, we can also ask uh, like for kids to think about different ways. Zacchaeus would have thought of, uh, you know, uh, seeing Jesus through the crowd. Maybe they can brainstorm on uh, like putting uh, stones up or, you know, uh, climbing a high wall or yeah, different ideas that they can come up with. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Others, can I hear others sharing as well? Any other thoughts? I think in once in a while it's okay to take them out to a tree to teach about values, ask one student to climb up <laughs> and all that. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, they love it. Uh, you know, naturalists' uh, intelligence um, would really love this. Spatial intelligence would also uh, love this. Just sitting under the tree and then thinking um, that will also be very nice. Yes, thank you. 
just create uh, visuals or illustrations depicting this, the, the, the key scenes. Basically, it says in the Bible, you know, the Israelites were on one mountain, the, the Philistines on another mountain, down the valley it was Goliath. So you have to create visuals for them, illustrating, depicting the, uh, the scenes from the story. Um, yeah, using visual aid to set the scene and capture the children's attention. Yes, thank you, Zelotoli. Also, you know, how David was standing in front of Goliath, how David was so small, Goliath was so huge. You know, <clears throat> Zacchaeus on the tree and how he hides and how Jesus stops and looks up and, you know, all of those things. You can create all those visuals in that stations. They would just love it. Also, you can use props or simple costumes to engage children uh, to enact or act out the scenes in the story, uh, just allowing them to, you know, physically embody the characters and their um, actions. So you can have, uh, you know, uh, like an armor, something very heavy for them, you know, or the sword, and you can find have this kid just like sinking into it, and you no know, boots or something, which will be very exciting for them. But uh, they will all learn. So the visual learners will learn by seeing, by doing bodily kinesthetic intelligences. Will also be interested. Interpersonal will also be inter interested when you use props and. Um, costumes. Okay, we'll move on to the next one. Thank you all for sharing your um, creative thoughts on spatial intelligence. What about by bodily kinesthetic intelligence? <clears throat> um, I was just thinking about having Team Goliath and Team David, where they can uh, just act out a, a specific group of people. They can act out like David. We can make them. Through that, even we can make them memorize the verse, like what David said, and the power of the words. And one can act like David, and we can make them move. We can even push the chairs, make it as a battleground or something, so that uh, they can move their bodies and they get their edge. Yes, nice. You can create a battle scene there with you know brothers standing and those uh, the fearful is the light and David and Goliath. Yes. Anything else? Can have a slingshot stone and you can have uh, you know david you know uh, uh enact that slingshot and throw it you can have uh, like john paul said you can have a child climb up a tree as well just ensure the child doesn't fall you know all that incorporating body uh, physical movements okay also you can have uh, get them to uh, uh, you know enact the story retell the story uh, do uh, actions or just make the characters we make the characters so you know and ask the rest of the class to guess who's the character whether it was the brothers or whether it was the uh, israelites king saul so they can mimic these these kind of intelligence can mimic the character and they have to uh, guess which should be very very uh, interesting okay uh, we'll stop here uh, We'll continue in the next class. Uh, anyone has any questions, any doubts? Any questions, any doubts? You can also incorporate, uh, you know, in your teaching, Bible study groups, teaching, your preaching, you can, you know, have this at the back of your mind and also uh, cater to these kind of intelligences when you are preaching, teaching. Uh, it will just help the audience who's uh, listening to you. Okay, any questions, any doubts? No? Okay, thank you all for joining class. Um, have a blessed week ahead and I'll see you on Friday for our TTP class. Thank you everyone.